The end is come upon the four corners of the land. Now is the end come upon thee. I'll send my anger upon thee and will judge thee according to thy ways and will recompense upon thee all thine abominations. Thus saith the Lord, verse 5, and evil, and only evil. Boy, that's getting pretty bad when it's just evil only. Amen. And only evil, behold, is come. Sixth verse. An end is come, the end is come. That's just the way it reads. An end, the end. Amen. Somebody hold on to our little fellow here. Don't turn him loose. Amen. Don't let the kids run loose while we're preaching. Praise God. An end has come. The end has come. It watcheth for thee. Behold, it is come. Amen. He got to learn to be still in church one time or the other. Amen. Amen. Joel, chapter 3. Put you in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full. And the vats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes in the valley decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and moon shall be darkened. Stars shall withdraw their shining. Matthew chapter 3, verse 12. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12. Middle of the fifth verse, my son. Despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Amen. I like to talk for a little while about the valley of threshing. The valley of decision in Joel means the valley of thrashing. Amen. Uh, In the cycles of God's divine dealings with men, there are times of grace and then there are times of judgment. In Ezekiel, he speaks of that time of grace coming to an end. And end, the end is come. Amen. Ezekiel was in captivity himself, sitting among the captives. And he was talking to captives. And he said, the end has come. The end of what? The end of that period of grace and probation that God dealt with Israel in a time of relative peace in their own land. There were many chastenings but times, but then came judgment. Amen. The end that Ezekiel talks about is judgment. It would be, according to Jeremiah, 70 years long. 70 years of slavery. 70 years of bondage. 70 years of Babylonian captivity. Seventy long years. And then according to Daniel, the time would begin again 
when the command was given to restore and rebuild uh, Jerusalem and the temple. Amen. And uh, that would start another cycle of 490 years of relative prosperity, relative blessing, with chastenings, but times, however, at least they were in their own land, in possession of their own temple. Amen. That too would last a total of 490 years. Amen. That was cut short at the crucifixion of Christ at the end of the 69th week. Amen. Seven years short of 490. God stopped the clock. You say, does God stop the clock? God's got as much right to stop the clock as the Bengals has got a right to stop the clock. God got as much right to stop the clock as the Boston Bulls have got a right to stop the clock. Amen. And God stopped the clock. I guess the Boston Bulls or cows or something or other. Amen. Hobos or something. Amen. Uh, anyway, God's got a right to stop the clock. How do you count your basketball game? How do you count your football game? Huh? Amen. How do you count your soccer game? How do you... Doing baseball, even you call time out. Amen. When Israel rejected the Messiah, God called time out. Amen. An end came for Israel. The temple was rent in twain. Judgment came upon Israel. Amen. The power of God was withdrawn from Israel as a nation. Amen. That is as a, as a kingdom nation. Amen. And God in His mercy, praise God, would deal with the whole world. Now, on equal footing, praise God. Ezekiel said an end has come. It's harvest time in the Philippines. We've been there six times, at the, and five of them was this time of the year. One time I went in February with icicles hanging on the trees, and got there as 90 degrees in the Philippines. Amen. But most time we went in the fall. And one of the harvests, one of the main harvests, rice harvest is going on right now. Amen. It's nothing to go down the road and see a Filipino with a screen stretched on a rack. Amen. And, and, and he's throwing rice straw up there and whopping it. He's beating it. Amen. What's he doing? He's thrashing rice. Amen. Walk up to him perhaps and say, Sir, do you like rice? Yes, I love rice. Co-op. Co-op. Then why are you beating it? Because I like rice. Amen. It's the only way to get it out is to beat it out. Amen. Oh, yes. Joel spoke of a day when the harvest would come that would be a threshing, a beating, if you will. Amen. In Israel, when it came harvest time, uh, if it was a small harvest, they would beat it out like that. Amen. On a, a rock or something. They would, uh, uh, but then they had what they call a big flat place on the ground, big flat rock, preferably. There's plenty of rocks over there. Amen. Just finding one flat is all you have to do. Amen. And they... They, they would take that grain and spread it out on the ground and they would stomp on it. They'd get the whole family out there stomping on it. Everybody would stomp. Amen. Hey, y'all like barley? Y'all like wheat? Yes, we like barley. Yes, we like wheat. Well, what are you stomping on it for? Because we like barley and we like wheat and we don't like straw. Amen. It's the only way to get the barley and the wheat separated from the straw and the chaff. Amen. Everywhere in the Philippines this time of the year, there are fires going. You know what those fires are? They're burning straw and chaff. Amen. If it wasn't enough, you know, for the Filipino to beat his rice out of his, his straw, amen, he... He takes it and spreads it right on the main highway. 
I'm talking about the main highway that runs from one end to lose on to the other that Marcos built and it's got Marcos statue beside the road. Big head on the mountain. Carved out of solid rock. Amen. And those Filipinos, for the lack of a place to dry their rice, they'll spread it right in the lane you're driving in. And take up about six foot of your side of the road to dry their rice. I mean, they'll spread it out there and they'll put rocks around it. They don't use cones. They don't have no cones. They use rocks. Amen. Sometimes, you know, when you get crowded, Jimmy, on the road and traffic's thick, I've seen people run right through it, <laughs> drive their car. Most of them respect the farmer and drive around the rice, drying in the road. Because they just leave it there one day in that hot sun. And then they sack it up at dark. And then they take it off. They're not done with that rice. Amen. It's not white. It's brown. Amen. And they take it to a mill, if you please. And that mill polishes that rice. And there's another fire beside the road. Amen. And it's that bran off that rice that they're burning. And so there's smoke everywhere in the Philippines. Handkerchiefs are in style in the Philippines. Even if there's not any smoke, everybody carries a handkerchief. Because they put it over their nose when the air is full of smoke. They put it over their nose when the house is. They don't have no chimney in the house. They build a fire every morning out of sticks and, and, and cook the rice. Amen. So the house gets full of smoke. Their hut gets full of smoke. There's no chimney. Amen. And so while they're cooking the rice, it gets full of smoke. And so handkerchiefs are in style in the Philippines because the fires are everywhere. If nowhere else, they're in your house while mom's cooking breakfast in the morning. Amen. Oh, yes. Praise God. It takes some doing to get the grain ready. I want to tell you tonight, we're in a time of relative peace. We're in a time of unprecedented prosperity. Perhaps unprecedented peace and prosperity of all time. But I feel in my bones an end is coming. I'm not a prophet of doom, but I, I feel like walking down the street sometimes with a sign on my back and a sign on my front saying the end is near. Amen. I want to tell you the end is near. Amen. I have lived to see two generations and part of three rise. Amen. I have watched the evolution of the church. And I want to tell you there's a different feeling in the air tonight. Amen. And gone are the days when, brother, the apples fell from the tree like they was ripe. Amen. Ready just to touch and then fall into your hand. It's not that way anymore. Amen. It's persimmon time in Arkansas. Amen. And you know, they've got all these stories about, you know, the persimmons get ripe after the frost. Hogwash. I know all about persimmons. I was raised in the shadow of a persimmon tree. Amen. And persimmons get ripe when they get ripe. Amen. That's right. Amen. How do you tell when they're ripe? You mean you can't go out and pick persimmons off the tree after the frost? Try it. The morning after. You're in for a disappointment. How do you tell which persimmons is ripe? Gently shake the tree. <laughs> Just gently shake the tree. 
Let the wind blow gently through the tree, and the ones that's ripe, Charles Lucas, will fall off. Pick it up off the ground and dust the dirt off of it and the debris and eat that. But don't trust your luck to pick them off of the tree. <laughs> you get disappointed even after the frost. Oh, yes, because the persimmons are only ripe when they're ripe. And it varies with the tree. Amen. And it varies with the location of the tree. And it varies with the ground that the tree was planted in. Amen. And so some gets ripe early and some gets ripe late. Hey, Amen. We've lived in a day of relative calm. We've lived in a day of relative prosperity. We've lived in a day of relative camp meeting revival. Praise God. And when God got through with one operation, He executed another operation. Praise God. There was the tent revivals and the great tent cathedrals spread across the land. And then we got together, praise God, in the, in the fifties and we found each other and praise God, among free holiness folks at least, there rose up a couple of dozen camp meetings across the country. Amen. And the glory rolled in the camp meeting again. And then when the camp meeting was beginning to wane and interest was beginning to be just a little bit uh, 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 dull. Hey, man, the youth camps took off, praise God. And the youth camps uh, had a great move of God. Uh, amen. And we've had relative blessing for two and a half generations. But an end has come. We're at the end of the road. And a lot of the old heads are dying off. And if we're not careful, we won't have any responsible youth to take over. Amen. I'm talking about responsible youths. Ah, yes. Amen. When are we going to quit blaming our plight on somebody else? When are we going to accept responsibility for our own condition? We made our own choice. We made up our own mind. We did our own thing and then turned around and blamed Grandma and Grandpa for it. How stupid can you get? You can't even blame the church for your condition. Ain't you got a Bible to read? Ain't you got an altar to pray on? Ain't you got knees to bend? You can't blame the church. You can't blame a deacon board. You can't blame a Sunday school teacher. Amen. Where are we going to take responsibility for our own self? If there's anything left after God runs them oxen over us, if there's anything left after God turns them horses loose on us, amen, if there's anything left after God gets done stomping, if there's anything left after He gets done fanning His threshing floor, whew, it'll be grain. Amen. His fan is in His hand. What is that fan? That's a threshing shovel. It serves as a beating instrument and a winnowing instrument. Amen. It beats the stalks, beats the grain out, the grain falls being heavier down to the bottom. Amen. It throw it all up in the air in a high wind and the wind blows the straw away from the threshing floor till after y'all, after a while, all you've got left is grain. Amen. An end has come. I wonder what kind of beating. Hey, if we don't obey easy, if we don't obey quickly, if we don't fall when they gently shake the tree, He knows how to blow stronger winds. He knows how to turn the oxen loose tied to a central post. March him also over the threshing floor. Amen. Hey! I'm talking about judgment! You know that? 
Joel was talking about judgment. Amen. His fan is in his hand. Is it thrashing time? He's still got some plans for Israel tonight. Amen. He's still got to thrash Israel yet. He's got seven years to do it. Amen. They rejected the Messiah. Still are. They rejected their Messiah. Still do. Amen. Amen. The ones that have a secret idea that Jesus Christ was really the Messiah, the Savior of the world, not just a prophet, they can't admit it openly. And so it's got to stomp. He's got to beat. <laughs> Jacob's trouble's coming. But before Jacob's trouble come, we're going to have to have some chastening. If uh, We're having our chastening now. You see, when he said he will thoroughly purge his floor, he's not talking about the church. The church is not his floor. He's talking about Israel. The church is his body. Amen. And the true church has a part in that time of judgment, in execution of that judgment. Praise God. The true church will call into play the forces of chastisement upon Israel. The true church, His body represented in glory, raptured into His presence, will call out as the seals are opened one by one, those horrible horsemen. Amen. The true church will introduce the Redeemer, praise God, that has prevailed and is worthy to open the book. It was one of the elders. What song did the elders sing? Thou hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every nation, tribe, and kindred, and tongue. Hey! Amen. The church is going out before he purges his floor. Amen. Hey, if those that are saved in the tribulation have to seal their testimony with their blood, they wind up under the altar as martyrs. Amen. Huh? And the great whore gets drunk with the blood of the saints. Then where are we which are alive and remain going to come from? Hmm? I'll tell you where they're going to come from. They're going to come out of the church right now. Now listen to me. Amen. If the Lord sees anything in us worth saving, and we are naturally prone to be in rebellion, we're naturally inclined to the flesh, if we're not very careful, Amen. He'll whip us. Hey, don't you like L.L., Lord? Yes, I like him. said, why are you whipping him? Because I like L.L. Amen. Whom he loveth, he chastens. Yes. Amen. Amen. Don't you like Job, Lord? Yes, I love Job. Amen. Why are you stopping Job? Because I like Job, but I don't like that chaff. And so God stomps, and He treads His threshing floor. Amen. And His fan is in His hand. Co-op, co-op, co-op. And He takes it, He scoops it, throws it into the air. Co-op. And the wind blows the chaff away, and the grain falls to the ground. Amen. And multitudes or multitudes are in the valley of threshing. The valley of separation. The valley of the beating. If you please. What's it going to take? I know what it's going to take. It's going to take chastisement. What's it going to take to get people to be faithful to God? I know what it's going to take. 
Yeah, he's going to have to beat them within an inch of their life. And you better be glad he does. Because the saddest word you ever heard is when our Heavenly Father says, Let him alone. Don't chasten him anymore. Don't beat him no more. Amen. I don't love him anymore. God loves everybody. He said, Eat from his jaw to his idols. Let him alone. Amen. Saddest words ever to ring in eternity is when God lets his people alone. Sends them no prophets, no holiness preachers. Amen. He just lets them alone. And whatever he, whatever they get is of their own making the false prophets that prophesy smooth things. Amen. That don't talk about separation. No. Liberals, if you will, that are skilled at massaging rebels and making them feel good while they sin. Amen. It's God's business today in this hour. What we got attached is to render the comfortable uncomfortable. Amen. And so he said, Despise thou not the chastening of the Lord. Amen. An end has come. Amen. It come, it's come before. In the cycles of God's dealings with men, God gets enough after a while. The long-suffering God runs its course. The mercies of God runs its course. And God has been known to cut off whole generations. Amen. Today we're blessed. There's a preacher on every station. There's a preacher on every corner. There's a church on every street. And usually you can find one that preaches you got to live right. If you look hard enough. Amen. Usually you'll find, if you look hard enough, a preacher preaches righteousness. Huh? But woe be unto Hamilton. Woe be unto Ohio. Woe be unto the United States of America. God says, America is joined to her idols. Let them alone. Amen. Last year at this time, we was in merry old England. Amen. And revival has ceased in England. The revival fires have ceased to burn in England. You can't find a church nowhere where the revival fires are burning, where there's anybody attending much. Amen. Not only are the revival fires not burning, they don't want it. Amen. Look at the mess they're into. Look at the mess they're in. Amen. But did you know they had John Wesley? Did you know that they had Spurgeon? Did you know that they had Parker? Did you know that they had the mighty reformers of bygone years whom I don't have time to mention? Great Lord, they had it all. They were spearheaded missionary activity in the world. Praise God. They sent missionaries uh, over the seven seas to the ends of the earth. They had it first. But an end has come for England. And that disease that swept over England, that godless spirit has started to sweep over the United States. It starts in the universities, in our schools, 
as God is screened out of the thinking of our children. Prayer is out. Bible is out. The Ten Commandments are out. Amen. That's why the schools are, are in such a mess. Amen. Nobody's got any faith in the educational system. Amen. They can't get a, 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 a one mill levy passed. People's tired of paying taxes for fun and games instead of real education. Amen. An end has come in America. An end has come. People don't have any faith in their politicians. Amen. An end has come. The preachers have failed at such a scale today that it's not difficult to see us as confidence is in an all-time low. An end has come. Because the very one that should have the answers can't keep their own house clean. And the end has come. What's it going to take? The beating. Whop, 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 whop. What's it going to take? The trampling of the threshing floor. Amen. To have a few ready for the coming of the Lord. Amen. As the Lord traps His flesh and floor. As the Lord treads His wine press uh, until His garments are stained with blood. It's up to us as individuals to build a spiritual fire. It's up to us as individual church to seek the face of God, to fast and pray and walk with God, and see revival continue. Extend the tranquility of our day just a little bit longer. You got the answer! But when are we going to be responsible ourselves and quit turning it over to somebody else? Let the preacher do it! Let mom do it! Let dad do it! Let the old gray heads do it! Us young folks, we're too out of it. I'll tell you something. God knows how to wield the whip. His fan is in His hand. He knows how to screen His church for the rapture. And that's just about to take place, folks. An end is about to come. Amen. If the end does not come, a generation will find themselves wanting, and another generation will enter into the promised land of God and leave them behind. Amen. Ah, which ones will go with God? Which ones will make up your mind to claim the promise of God? Let's stand and let's pray. Father, challenge our hearts, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, if we are not willing and obedient, we know it will take chastisement. If we be willing and obedient, if we be easy to obey, easy and love it, then we'll be loved of God and blessed of God. But if we remain obstinate and rebellious and cast blame on somebody else for our pitiful spiritual state, God will hold us personally responsible and judge us as we stand in our tracks. For our failure to obey God. God, anoint us, Lord. Help us, Lord. I beg you, help us to be responsible Christians in this hour. To open our eyes and not be blind to the lateness of the hour. Oh, God, I pray, as we come to the end of this millennium and start it on, We pray that we'll be ready to go in.